Hello friends, welcome to Health Music and Fitness channel. Today is ECG vlog number 16 and we'll be discussing a case of complete heart block. Till now we have discussed a lot in the ECGs and we have discussed what a normal ECG looks like, how to record an ECG and what are the different complexes in the ECG rhythm. And we have also discussed few conduction blocks, left bundle branch block, right bundle branch block, left anterior hemi block and left posterior hemi block. And we have also discussed about ventricular premature complex, how what they look like. Also, we have discussed about AV nodal rhythm, uh, junctional SK beats, and how to differentiate them from VPCs, that is ventricular premature complexes. And we have also discussed about AV blocks, first degree AV block, second degree AV block, third degree AV block. Third degree AV block is also called complete heart block. And Type 2 AV block is further of two types, Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2. Mobitz type 1 is also called Wenke Bax block. So till now we have covered quite a bit and uh, today we'll be just discussing a case of complete heart block and we'll finish it in two minutes. So let's start. Look at this ECG, look at the calibration. Calibration is totally fine, it's 10 small squares in height and the plateau is good and uh, the, which means the voltage has not been reduced in the calibration by the ECG machine. If the ECG paper is bypassed by the stylus during recording of the ECG, so then the uh, calibration is reduced to half. It will just show five small squares in height, which means if your R wave in certain lead is 10 millimeters, it is actually 20 millimeters. So this part you have to remember. So coming back to complete heart block, you look at the calibration, look at the rate, rhythm, and axis. We'll fast forward through these because you have already discussed this in the previous ECGs. But you must make a note that the P waves are okay in shape, which means they're coming from SA node. They're not abnormal in shape and the P to P heart rate, so to say, is more than the QRS to QRS heart rate. So there are more P waves and less number of QRS complexes. This is a typical thing you will see in complete heart block. So you have to calculate the heart rate for the atrium and the ventricle separately. And the classical description is you will see the P waves dancing through the QRS complexes. There will be no more number of P waves and less number of QRS complexes like in this ECG and you should also make a mental note that this is a junctional SK beat. So the QRS complexes are arising from the AV node because the AV block is there, complete heart block is there. The P waves are not going through the AV node and into the bundle of waves and to stimulate the left and the right ventricle. So heart has to sustain life and God has made us in such a way till the end we will try. If the SS stops firing, the atrium will take over. Atrium stops firing, AV node will take over. AV nodal rhythm will start. If that doesn't work, uh, maybe the ventricles will take over. VPCs will try to sustain life. And uh, in this, there is a complete heart block. Also, you look in the inferior leads. You have to look at everything. Yeah, the P wave, QRS, the durations, everything you have to see the progression of R waves from V1 to V6, some problem can be somewhere and if you don't look for it, you will miss it. And uh, in this ECG, you look in lead 2, 3 AVF. The ST is markedly elevated and the ST segment is merging into the proximal limb of the T wave, which is a sign of hyperacute MI. And there is a tall T wave. And also there are ST depressions in V1 to V6 and AVL also, lead 1 also. So this signifies reciprocal ischemia. So if there is, I have told you before, if there is elevation in V1, V2, R wave is there in V1, V2, there will be S wave in V5, V6 and vice versa. Inferior leads showing tall R and lateral leads will show deep S. So this thing you have to keep in mind. So in inferior MI, you will see ST elevation in lead 2, 3 AVF and reciprocal change. This is a classical change of in inferior wall MI. If after two or three days of MI, V1 to V6 still show 
ST depression. Then you have to consider down sloping ST uh, depression due to ischemia of the anterior wall also. Uh, reciprocal changes will revert back. V1 to V6 will become normal if there is no anterior ischemia or things like that. But if there could be inferior wall MI with anterior wall ischemia. So in that case after two or three days the ischemic changes will continue to persist and that will signify a triple vessel disease. The right coronary is blocked and the LAD is blocked, circumflex is blocked. So these patients they will require urgent angiography and PTCA or uh, open heart surgery as the need be. And uh, so far for the block, the complete heart block, you need to keep the heart rate above 50 at least, 50 beats per minute. So for that you can give atropine on SOS basis or as a mild infusion. Uh, you have to titrate the dose from patient to patient, make sure they don't go into psychosis, atropine induced psychosis and other side effects of atropine. Or you can start an isoprenaline drip and um, you can also give tablet or cipranolin, 10 mg TDS or as the need may be. And this will keep the heart rate up. But the eventual treatment of complete heart block is cardiac pacing. But not in all centers there is a cath lab. So till you, uh, so till you are able to shift the patient to a higher center for angiography and where there is cath lab and you can put a pacemaker, you have to keep the heart rate up with isoprenaline infusion or orciprenaline tablets. So that's it in this ECG. If you like our videos, please subscribe, comment, share and uh, click the bell notification icon so that you can be notified of the new ECGs which we upload. This helps us in making more quality videos and it improves our Google ranking. Thank you.